Double tap equalizer ammo, 357 Magnum versus 9mm plus P. I'm going to use my full size guns today, so my 4 and 8 inch barrel Smith & Wesson 686 versus my Smith & Wesson MNP 9 with the 5 inch barrel. So, a 357 Magnum, it's a 195 grain total weight, and our 9mm is a 165 grain. So, this is interesting ammunition. So, what they're doing here is they're loading double projectiles in each cartridge so our 195 grain equalizer is actually a 125 grain bullet on top of i believe it's a 50 60 70 grain that's what it is 70 grain they, i think i read it was a ball but i'm not 100 percent sure now our nine millimeter plus p is a 165 grain what that is is a 115 grain bullet on top of a 50 grain disc is what they listed as and i believe that these are sierra bullets they're exposed i'm not 100 percent sure but basically the stuff you know it's it's advertised you get uh two impacts for each pull of the trigger so i'm not really sure if that's really a great idea but we're gonna see what we get with ammunition like this our 357 magnum it says it's rated at 1145 feet per second through a six inch barrel our nine millimeter plus p says it's rated at 995 feet per second through a beretta 92 fx which has about the same barrel length as us so we should get around a thousand feet per second if they're correct with that so we're going to go through the chronograph see what kind of velocity and accuracy we get at the same time then i'm going to do my 10 percent clear ballistic test and we're just going to go into plain clear ballistics just to see what the best potential is of these cartridges and then after that i'm going to put on four layers of denim on front of this and then after going through three inches of clear ballistics which represents a pectoral muscle because this is about half as dense as flesh so that's like an inch and a half pectoral muscle after that we're going to put in a quarter inch medium density fiberboard to represent hitting our ribs and sternum and that's more of a real world simulation and we'll see how the ammunition performs like that and then today this is going to be actually very important for me to see what kind of accuracy we get with this because I want to see, you know, if those, if that second projectile is going to really spread out and cause any collateral damage. I think I read somewhere it said that it, it's supposed to impact within an inch of the the main bullet, but they didn't really give a range. So we're going to see what we get at some distances. So let's get started with this test. All right, I'm about maybe three and a half yards from the current graph. I don't want to get too far away uh, with this being a double projectile. So we're rated at 995 feet per second with our nine millimeter. Let's see what we actually get. 1,020, so a little bit above rate of velocity. And we can see right there, you can kind of see how these are impacting. I believe the top hole is the uh, actual bullet, and the bottom one is probably the, uh, the second projectile. So we'll keep going with this. Exactly rated velocity, 995. 1027. I'll read 10 11 so we are a little bit above rate of velocity overall which is not bad 357 magnum now this is rated at 1145 through a six inch barrel uh but you know with six inch barrels when you're talking such a large payload there shouldn't be a whole lot of loss through a four and an eighth inch barrel so let's we'll see how close we get to that 1145 feet per second A lot of smoke, 977. I'll read. 978. 955. 950. So we're almost 200 feet per second below rated velocity. And I was going to call that before I started doing this. I'm like, this is what companies do. It is. They, they overinflate their revolver numbers because even if you were to say that uh, a six inch barrel, you're going to get more velocity. That's typically, typically when you're looking at 110, 125. Once you start getting the bigger payloads, they're loaded with less powder. So there's less to burn and you're, gonna, you're not going to get significantly more in a six inch barrel than what you would with a uh, four inch barrel. So we're definitely seeing inflation there with our <laughs> rated velocity. So let's start our ballistic shell block with these and just kind of see what we get with them. All right, I've backed up just a hair further than what I normally do. So we're looking at probably 10 feet from where the muzzle is going to be to where it's going to impact this gel. 
that'll kind of give it a little bit of time to potentially spread out a little bit but i'm not really sure how it's going to work so best potential plain gel nine millimeter see what this does all right i do the same thing here with our 357 mag i'm just taking a look here because it does look kind of wonky it spread out a lot so i'm not really sure where to hit this with our 357 but let me just shoot wherever let's go take a look All right, so there's a lot of damage in there. I'm not even really sure which projectiles. Let me take a look here. I believe this bottom one here is our nine millimeter. And they came with almost the same, the same penetration. And I believe that top part up there is also the nine millimeter. So just looking from these, these damage paths here. Uh, yeah, I believe that's the nine millimeter. And it's at about... 14 and three quarters inches penetration and we have good expansion with our 357 mag what we're looking at here just a hair more we're at about 15 and a quarter but our second projectile with the 357 mag is about 13 and a half so statistically here they did fine so let's put on our MDF and this might get kind of weird because these things are jumping all over throughout this gel. Let me put in this older block here on front so I don't mess with this and we'll put our MDF on there and we'll see how it does that way. All right, nine millimeter through our denim and MDF. Let's see what this does. Let's try our 357 now. All right, 357 mag. Through our denim and MDF. We'll take a look. All right, so I use different MDF because Per, per shot just because I wasn't sure what was going to happen and with our nine millimeter we got a penetration of about 17 and three quarters inches and there's some expansion um our second projectile came down here hit my shelf here it is it's just a disc that went to about 15 inches you know as where our, our main projectile went to that uh you know our 17 and a half inches now with our 357 mag First, I want to show this impact with our nine millimeter. This is kind of how they're impacting here. Now with our 357 mag, I put on a different piece of fiberboard here. Not the same thing here. They're just slightly off centered as it impacts. But what we're seeing is with our nine millimeter, we started getting expansion. With our 357, we did not get expansion because that velocity was so below rated that we got tumbling right here. We went to exactly 18 inches our second projectile went to 16 and a half so what we're seeing here is statistically it basically did all right which is kind of a weird thing to say you wouldn't think that this stuff would penetrate adequately but not over penetrate and get expansion most of the time but that's what it did so that's really surprising to me to be honest so when we look at our terminal ballistics here other than the mdf and denim clogging that uh 357 everything seems pretty good here <laughs> so let me shoot at uh my steel now this is what i really want to see now obviously they spread out like a shotgun when they hit in gel but through air they shouldn't spread out that much but i do want to see where we're impacting and if we get any collateral collateral damage so let me shoot at my steel now all right 25 yards from the target i'm gonna go center mass very slow fire here and see if I can see a second projectile impact. So, nine millimeter, Let's see how it does. Yeah, very widespread. 
So aiming center, I'm guessing the one that's center is the main bullet because that's where I was pretty much aiming. Let me do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I would say both of them went all over the place there. 357 mag. Yeah, this does. And again, we're full of smoke. Right, I can't really tell her or, or impacting. Let me aim for a headshot. Let's see what happens. Hmm. One more time. All right, let me aim for a headshot about eight inches low. And all over eight inches low again. All right, these things are just going all over the place. Try that with the nine millimeter aim for a headshot. Let me aim about, let me do about four inches low. Definitely a very far off point of impact. So what I want to do here, I want to go back to 75 yards just because that's kind of funny to me. I just want to see what happens if we can hit multiple projectiles on target from a distance like that. My thinking is probably not because of what we're seeing, but you know, I want to see on camera if we have like any impacts on the dirt and where they are. If one hits the steel, what's impacting the dirt and how far apart are they? So let me do that now. All right, 75 yards from the target. You know, the reason why I use these particular guns for this test and not short barrels is because I really wanted to see what would happen at distance. You guys know what I'm capable of with my full-size guns, so that should give me the ability to hit the target and see if there's any weird collateral damage going on, missing rounds, all of that. So let me take out one shot with this 9mm center mass. See if I can make a hit. All right, it almost looks like there's two on target, but I really can't tell. I can only see one impact. So if there's another one, I think I see it might not be. Let me do that with the 357 mag. See how that looks. With such low velocity and such a heavy payload, these things are shooting the muzzle up a little bit before they leave. So, typically with something like that, I'm going to have to aim at the bottom of the target. So, let me see what I can do. Hmm. Let me just aim center then. don't see any impacts but I'm guessing that was the secondary projectile because it didn't hit with a lot of force keep trying that was the main projectile yeah so on the downrange camera, it's kind of wonky the way it shows it because it picks it up all weird. If you notice, like in, in the real world, the, the top of the target is like 20, 30 feet from the top of the hill. But on camera, the top of the target's touching the top of the hill. It really distorts everything. But what I saw there in that last shot was it looked like one projectile hit dead center high about 10 feet. And one was about the right elevation over about maybe eight feet to the left. <laughs> All right, nine millimeter here. Let me keep going with this. See, that should have hit. I had a good feeling with that shot. Same thing there.
So I kept both eyes open all the way. I kind of halfway squint one. And what I saw again was the same thing. One hit high above the target about two feet, one hit over about eight feet to the left. So it's, it's randomly all over. So this whole thing with, you know, keeping the other projectile an inch away from the other one, I'm gonna say that's probably seven yards that they're quoting that. Uh, Cause any real distance we're seeing some definite significant changes here. So this is interesting, an interesting ammo. I'm not sure what it's supposed to equalize. Um, maybe dual threats. So you have two shots per pull of the trigger. I don't, but it's supposed to hit in one spot. <laughs> equalize your chances of going to jail for collateral damage. I don't know, but what I'm seeing with this, it, it's really weird that at close range, it actually did okay with their nine millimeter. Our nine millimeter was a pass and our ballistic test across the board. Our 357 mag, the Denim and MDF was a fail simply because the rate of velocity was so far off. And like I tried to mention before, you know, when 357 has got a long case, the heavier and heavier and heavier bullet you go, it goes deeper in the case. You have to actually back off powder charges. You know, like if we're talking like a full power 125 grain load, for instance, I'm just trying to think of my head of charges. Without even using magnum powder, with using like traditional old powder that you use a nine millimeter, where you might use four grains in a nine millimeter, you're looking at closer to eight grains in a 357 magnum with 125 grain. But if you bring it down to like a 158 grain, you're maybe like five and a half grains. So what you're working with for powder charge, it should have burned up in a four inch barrel with such a heavy projectile. Because they would have had to back that powder down really far to where you know, four inches, full full four inches of barrel would have been enough to burn that up. Adding two more inches wouldn't have done anything. So they're completely far off with what they're doing with that. So it's the same thing. They're just not putting any time into the revolver cartridges because I guess people don't care about them anymore. But in a nine millimeter, they pump it up and does what it says it's gonna do, which is really interesting. Uh, but overall, our nine mil mil millimeter did okay, our 357 didn't do good at all and not to mention the fact that it didn't expand through our denim and MDF, MDF but there was so much smoke that once I fired a shot I was completely blinded until I moved my hand like this to move it out of the way to be able to see for a second shot that would indicate that the second projectile is pure lead as where it looked like our nine millimeter one it looked like it had like a, um, a gas check around the projectile so I'm going to say no on this ammo. I mean, you can use what you want, but I don't see anything good about this. So that's what you get today. So as always, comment, share, and like, and thanks for watching.